Hello and welcome to Mock Draft 1.0 on Quincy Bell Sports. This is um, being filmed on January 12th. I don't know when you're seeing this. You could be seeing this a week from now, two weeks from now, two days from now. I don't know when I'm going to upload this, but I want to just film it now. Um, I'm going to do an official f full first round mock draft. Um, I like doing mock drafts. They're fun. I don't think I've really done many for the channel. I don't think I've done one at all, actually. But um, I'm going to do one now. And so now, the since the first round of the playoffs is over, the draft like, order for the later teams might not be exactly correct. But at the very most, the team might be moving up, I don't know, one or two slots because they lost a playoff game. Like, that's all that's really going to end up happening. So if the order's not... 100% correct. Just just bear with me. And yeah, it's just going to be the only thing that would be um, wrong. If you like who I have your team picking, let me know. If you don't like who I have your team picking, let me know. Um, if your team doesn't have a first round pick, sorry, um, I was in that boat last year as a Bears fan, but the Bears do have a first round pick this year. So let me move out of the way so you can look at the lovely, lovely draft board. Um, 30 and 32 are sort of like for the Chiefs and Packers are sort of like off to the side a little bit. So let's get going. The first pick in the draft, I feel like this is an obvious one. I'm going to go with Trevor Lawrence, quarterback from Clemson to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Look, they they, they tanked a bunch for Trevor Lawrence and uh, they finished 1 in 15. The Jaguars are absolutely horrible. Um, they should be taking probably the best quarterback um, in the draft. Trevor Lawrence, first overall to the Jags. If you disagree and you think Justin Fields or Zach Wilson um, can go there, I'm not, I'm not, let's say Zach Wilson or Justin Fields completely just blow everyone away at the combine and Lawrence disappoints, okay? I, I, I don't know. You, Lawrence is most likely going to go number one, but if you have Fields or Wilson, number one, I'm not going to be so like, oh, I can't put anyone else there. Like, I am open to moving that, but. Trevor Lawrence is probably going to take it first overall. Second overall. Now, a lot of people have Zach Wilson here. I do not. I have Justin Fields, quarterback from Ohio State. I think he's the next best quarterback in this class. I like Zach Wilson. I'm not, I'm not huge on Zach Wilson. I think he's great, but I do think Justin Fields is a lot better. He's more mobile. He can run. And some of the throws he makes are just absolutely magnificent. Um, if you're a Jets fan, I wouldn't be sad. And crying that you're not going to get Trevor Lawrence because you're still going to get an elite player in either Justin Fields or Zach Wilson. Number three, the Miami Dolphins. They took Tua last year, and uh, it hasn't. It's been okay for Tua this year. He didn't really do as well as maybe Justin Herbert or Joe Burrow, but he still played really well. People are thinking they might trade for Deshaun Watson. Don't know much about that. Now they have a lot of ways they can go. They got this pick from the Laramie Tunsil trade from the Texans, and the Texans are just horrible this year. So they really lucked out. Um, so I have them taking Micah Parsons, linebacker from Penn State. This guy is an absolute animal. It is a shame he opted out at the start of the year. I really wanted to see him play, but I'm telling you, they could use another piece on the defensive side of the ball. It's it, it, you can never hurt to it can never hurt to have too many good players on the defensive side of the ball. I think that Micah Parsons would fit in perfectly with the with the Dolphins. I see some people that want them to take Devonta Smith. Some people want him to take P Penai Sewell, the linebacker from, or not linebacker, the offensive lineman from Oregon. There's just a bunch of ways you can go with Miami. I think they go with Micah Parsons at fourth. I think that the Falcons, I think it's time to move on from Matt Ryan and draft a new quarterback. And that new quarterback for me, is going to be Zach Wilson out of BYU. This guy is the Joe Burrow of last year in which he kind of just shot up through draft boards like no one really knew why. Like no, no one knew why this man was just shooting up through draft boards just for no reason whatsoever. Um, he looks great, has great mechanics. I have the Falcons picking him up. At fifth for the Bengals, this is might be the most obvious pick of the draft. And I, Sewell, I think that's how you say his name, or C, or Sewell, I don't know, I think it's Panay Sewell, um, offensive lineman from Oregon. This guy is supposed to be the next Orlando Pace, he's supposed to be just the next great thing at the offensive lineman. I don't know much about scouting offensive lineman, but I'll go ahead and believe you. Um, this guy, the, that, the Bengals need offensive linemen just desperately. They desperately need 
offensive. Actually, it shouldn't be O. Hold on. Let's change this for a second. That's better. They desperately need offensive linemen. Joe Burrow almost got killed last year. Joe Burrow practically did get killed last year. They desperately need an offensive lineman. Um, Sewell is a great fit uh, for them. The Eagles. My friend who's an Eagles fan, I showed him this. He really disagreed with this pick. Oh, I got to Hold on. I got to Okay. I have him taking Quiddy Pay, edge rusher from Michigan. This guy is, I think, in my opinion, he's the best edge rusher in the draft. And the Eagles can use basically anyone they can on the defensive side of the ball. The best pick for the Eagles, by far their best pick, would be Micah Parsons. Um, and if, if, for some reason, Miami wouldn't want him or they take someone else, then that's why I would have the Eagles take it. But with Parsons gone, it's I don't really know. I'm going to have them taking pay. Um, another team that needs a linebacker and anyone on the defensive side of the ball, the Detroit Lions. I have them taking... Oh, I, I forgot. I keep. I got back to Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa, linebacker from Notre Dame. This guy is an absolute animal. Um, I think he he had a ton of tackles last year. I think he like led the nation or was near the top of the nation in forced fumbles. A lot of people like this guy. I'm very high on him. I'm I'm higher on him than most people. I think he would fit in perfectly with the Lions at eight for the Carolina Panthers. A lot of people have him taking a quarterback. I like Bridgewater. I think I think they should stick with Bridgewater for at least one more year. I don't really know if they will or not, though, but the, at least I would. So I have them taking Kyle Pitts, a tight end from Florida. This guy has been one of the best tight ends I've ever seen uh, in college football. I mean, Hawkinson, maybe. Not even Hawkinson. The, I, Pitts has been an absolute animal, and I think he would just fit in perfectly in a Carolina offense that could use an extra threat. They also could basically use anyone on the defensive side of the ball. But I think Kyle Pitts, uh, I think, he, like, who, who's the Panthers tight end? I don't even think Panthers fans could tell me that. I'm going to take Kyle Pitts. At ninth, probably, man, is it just me or are the Broncos looking for a quarterback every year? My goodness, it is just that I don't think Drew Locke's the answer. I think they, they, they trade Drew Locke. They take a quarterback in the draft. Trey Lance out of North Dakota State. Uh, what did this guy throw? One interception like in his entire career or something like that? His stats are nuts. Now he is playing against FCS teams, but he showed a lot of promise. Um, has a great has a great ball. He could run really well. I think he would fit in perfectly with the Broncos, and then they get rid of Drew Locke. At 10th, um, for my Cowboys fans out there, um, James, you've been telling me you've want you've wanted this guy for the longest time, and basically this is who the who everyone has the Cowboys bit taking Patrick Sertain in uh, defensive back from Alabama. Uh, I have him going to the Cowboys. They they need a, either an offensive lineman or a defensive back because their secondary was atrocious this year. It was absolutely awful, and I have them taking Sertain to help combat that. At 11th, my Giants fans out there are going to be excited about this one, Devonta Smith. Now, a lot of people have Devonta Smith going to either the Dolphins or the Eagles. Uh, I just don't see the Eagles taking a receiver when they took one last year. I don't think receiver is the biggest need on that team. Um, I think they they would they, they need anyone on the d- defense. Well, I think the Dolphins and Eagles both could use someone on the defensive side of the ball. So I have Devonta Smith falling a little bit, but this guy is the most electric receiver I've seen in college football, maybe ever. This guy was absolutely sensational. Um, he he seems like he's two or three steps ahead of the defender at all times, all times. I mean, he would just be an absolute deep threat downfield, help give Daniel Jones someone to throw to. Who's their best receiver? Sterling Shepard? Not great. I think uh, – and the Giants have a pretty good defense. I think they could use an offensive weapon, and Smith would fit in um, perfectly. For the San Francisco 49ers, I have them take a Wyatt Davis offensive lineman from Ohio State. This team went to the Super Bowl last year, and then kind of just everyone was hurt. Garoppolo, Mostert, Bosa, bunch of literally their entire team was hurt. This is the only team that can use the "oh well we were hurt" excuse. Maybe maybe Cowboys fans. I get Niners fans and Cowboys fans are the only teams that can use the "but we were injured" excuse. But the Niners more so. They really don't have many like dire needs on their team. I think they could just 
And I, you, you, I feel like you can never go wrong drafting an offensive lineman. And Wyatt Davis looks to be a very good one. Chargers, I also have them taking an offensive lineman. Rashawn Slater from Northwestern. A lot of people like this guy. Again, you can't really go wrong uh, with offensive lineman picks. The Chargers are heading in the right direction. They have an underrated defense led by, uh, what's his name, Derwin James, I think. And Justin Herbert's really turning a corner when they get Austin Eckler back for a full healthy season. Um, they could be um, a dark horse team to make the playoffs. I like what I see out of the Chargers. If they could just close out a damn game. That would help. Vikings, another offensive lineman, Christian Derisoff out of Virginia Tech. Um, this guy didn't really have that much attention going into the year, but he played really well throughout the course of the year. Again, with offensive linemen, it's sort of like, well, I mean, you can you can take one, and it really is not going to hurt you unless you have like a super stacked offensive line. It feels like an offensive lineman pick can never uh, can never really hurt you. Now we have the New England Patriots. Now, a lot of people are going to want them to draft a quarterback. But to be completely honest with you, to be completely honest with you, it sounds like people really like Jared Stidham. That's what I've heard. So I'm going to go on a limb and see and to think that they're going to try to develop Jared Stidham and they're going to give him an offensive weapon to work around Jalen Waddell, wide receiver from Alabama. He has been an absolute animal throughout the first part of this year until he had a horrific um, knee injury, played a little bit in the national championship game, had like three catches, but but didn't really produce that much. Um, I still think that people are going to be really high on him. He's super electric. He could return punts. Great offensive weapon for the uh, for the uh, Patriots to have. Next, we have the Cardinals. And I'm going to do the Cardinals and Raiders at the same time here. I have them both taking uh, defensive backs. I have, the, I have the Cardinals taking Caleb Farley from Virginia Tech and the Raiders taking J.C. Horn from South Carolina. Both of these teams have some promise on offense, um, but both these teams could really use some help in the def- on the defensive side of the ball, particularly in the secondary. And Farley and Horn are basically clones of one, e- one another. They're very, very similar. You have you can have them going basically interchangeably. So I'm going to have Farley going first for no really particular reason. Um, at 18th. The Dolphins. Now, this is the main reason why I had them taking Micah Parsons first. Okay. Because with their 18th pick, I have them taking Jamar Chase. Now, this draft has some very good receivers, the ones we've covered already. Smith, Waddle, Chase. You also have Rashad Bateman, Kadarius Toney, Terrence Marshall, just to name a few more for you. Um, I don't really see Jamar Chase being taken that high. People are saying he's better than Devonta Smith. Um, I want the crack you're smoking um, because I do not see how you can think that um, a guy that has has been nothing short of sensational um, is better than a guy who hasn't played. But Jamar Chase showed a lot of promise last year, opted out of this season. That's why I see him falling a little bit. But if the Dolphins could take him, that could be an absolute steal for them. I think that if you, if you want to draft defense, you go with Parsons at three. Because I think there's a quite a big drop off between him and then I, I would rather take a really good defensive player high than a receiver. I feel like receivers are a dime a dozen. For example, Darnell Mooney for the Bears, taken in the fifth round. He's been just as good as Henry Ruggs, who was taken what eleventh last year. That's what I'm saying. Wide receivers are a dime a dozen. I don't think they're going to take a receiver that high. I'm going to have them taking a receiver with their second pick. The football team. Now, I did make this mock draft before Taylor Heineke absolutely lit up the Buccaneers during Wild Card Weekend. I don't think he's a long-term option, although he looked really, really good. Uh, I will give the football team that. Taylor Heineke did look really good, but I have them taking a quarterback, Mac Jones from Alabama. I like what I've seen from this guy. People have used the excuse, oh, well, he gets carried by his receivers. Not a really valid excuse. Um, I At the start of this year, I gave this – the Mac Jones slander I gave at the start of the year was was terrible. I had Alabama going, what, 10-2. and two. I had him losing to LSU and to – who else did I? I had, him losing, I had him losing to someone else. I think I had him losing to Georgia. Yeah, and I was like, Mac Jones, center blocks for feet, played terrible in, his, in the few games he had last year. He came out absolutely lit the world on fire. He has some sneaky mobility. He can move if he needs to. He's not like, I don't know, Tom Brady, where he just can't move his legs. Um, he definitely can, uh, can move if he needs to. My Chicago Bears. Now, a lot of people, this, this little thing I have over here 
It has the team needs for each team. I'm sorry, that looks a little bit messy. It says that the Bears' needs are a wide receiver, quarterback, tight end, edge rusher, and defensive back. Okay, I don't know what Bears' season um, this uh, this person's been watching. Um, I could see quarterback and to some extent receiver, okay? Tr- Trubisky, it might be time to move on. Receiver, if Robinson leaves, that could be a main point of concern. Tight end, Jimmy Graham and Cole Komet. Doesn't really make much sense. Edge rusher, uh, do you know who Khalil Mack is? And then defensive back, uh, do you know who uh, Jalen Johnson and Kyle Fuller are? You obviously don't. I have, This is what they need. I don't. Here's here's what I'm saying. A lot of people are really mad, and they're saying it's time to move on from Drew Bisky. They have their porch fix. they their they have their pitchforks up and all this stuff. I think if one of these top five quarterbacks are available, Lawrence Fields, Wilson, Lance, and Jones, if one of those five are available, you better pick them up. You better pick them up because if you don't, I'm going to be very upset. But uh, I don't think any of those are going to be available. So if it's not quarterback, I think they should take an offensive lineman. Next best offensive lineman on the board is Elijah Vera Tucker from USC. I think he would be just a great little plug and play because the offensive line has been terrible. Uh, Charles Leno and Jermaine Effetti in particular, they take way too many penalties and they're absolutely uh, swinging doors. Not enough Bear fans are putting enough blame on the offensive line because uh, it is terrible. The Jacksonville Jaguars, with their second pick in the draft, I have them taking Aziz Ojolari, edge rusher from Georgia. I like what I see out of this guy. A lot of people are really underrating this guy. People think he could fall to the second round. I love what I've seen out of Aziz. Um, I think he could be a great piece for the Jacksonville defense going forward. I like him a little bit more than some of the other defensive players that I'm about to name. From the Colts, I have them taking Samuel Cosme. Offensive lineman from Texas. Now, I know you could say that the Colts don't really need an offensive lineman that much. This team needs, chart says they need an offensive tackle. Sorry. But this team needs, chart says they need an offensive tackle. And quarterback, I don't really see them drafting a quarterback. I think Rivers sticks it out for one more year, if you ask me. I don't see a quarterback good enough to be taken at 22. So, I mean, it's never bad. it's never a bad idea to take offensive lineman. The Browns. Eric Stokes, defensive back from Georgia. They could use another piece in their secondary. Uh, uh, This chart says team needs are edge rusher, defensive back, linebacker, defensive tackle. So Eric Stokes from Georgia. Ojolari and Stokes are two guys I think that are really underrated. I feel like I'm, I'm always high on defensive players from Georgia. Because they're always studs. Mostly because the Bears picked Roquan Smith, and he's uh, an absolute animal. But I think Stokes would fit in perfectly with the Browns. Titans. I have them taking edge rusher uh, Gregory Rousseau from Miami. He could be a nice little defensive piece uh, for them. This list says they need an edge rusher, so why not go uh, with Rousseau? He could be a great fit. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jay to Feli. I think that's how you say that. Um, Tampa, again, could use a defensive lineman. Um, Jay, the draft is pretty weak at defensive lineman. Jay seems to be the best one we have here. So I think that he would fit in perfectly for the Baltimore Ravens. I have them taking Rashad Bateman, wide receiver from Minnesota. This guy has shown a lot of great promise. And Lamar Jackson could use another guy to throw to. Yeah, he's got, what's his name? Brown, Marquise Brown, he's got Mark Andrews, but if you add Rashad Bateman to that team, oh my goodness, they're lethal, and their defense is already really good, held Derek, Derek Henry and company to just 14 points, a team that was scoring upwards of 35 a game, um, so their defense is fine, I think Bateman would fit in perfectly with the Ravens, and I like what I've seen out of him, he is an absolute stud. Now, the Jets, I'm actually going to change the pick here, instead of Travis Etienne, I'm going to have them taking the... I thought ETN was better than Harris. Um, I'm going to change my evaluation on that because um, Najee Harris is an absolute tank. The first guy that gets to him is not bringing him down. They're just not. Now, I don't think this draft's really great in terms of running backs. And a lot of the teams up here, their top need uh, is not a running back. Um, Like, okay, the Jags, they have James Robinson. 
Um, maybe, maybe the Dolphins, but I don't see them taking a running back that high. Um, it, none of these teams really need a running back. They all have pretty good running backs. And even teams here, their top need isn't a running back. So I think Harris could fall. And I think the Jets with, who's their top running back? Frank Gore? I don't know. Um, I don't follow the Jets really closely, but they could definitely use a running back. Harris would be a perfect. If they could Justin Fields, Najee Harris, that'd be really good. Now, the Steelers. I, I made this mock draft uh, before the playoffs started. Like I said, um, after the playoffs, it is going to reinforce my point that the Steelers are going to move on from Ben Roethlisberger and take Kyle Trask, quarterback from Florida. I think Trask can be boom or bust in the NFL. And I think if he's drafted to a really good team like the Steelers, he can prosper. And that's what I think that they're going to do. I think Kyle Trask would be a great fit um, for Pittsburgh. Uh, New Orleans Saints, they are taking Xavier Collins, linebacker from Tulsa. Uh, the Saints have a really, really good defense, but if they could add a, this, this little chart over here says their number one need is a linebacker. And other than Koamora and Parsons, Collins is probably the next best linebacker. And he has played like a stud all year. I like this guy. Um, he looks like an absolute star. I think the Saints could get a, this could be the steal of the draft if they end up getting him. Buffalo Bills, Joseph Osai, edge rusher out of Texas. Bills could use another piece on defense. This chart says their number one need is an edge rusher. And so I'm going to go with that. And I think that they are going to end up taking Osai. Now, with my edge rushers, Payne, Osai, and Ojolari, um, I think Payne's the best. I think Ojolari is better than Osai. A lot of people are going to be mad at that, but I just think he is. But I think both of these teams could be very happy with whoever they pick. And now I need to move over to show you the uh, the Packers and the Chiefs. Let's, let's do this real quick. Packers, they need a receiver. And there were plenty of options. Uh, a favorite for me was Amon Ross St. Brown to uh, pair with his brother uh, Equanimous. Um, what kind of name? Amon Ra and Aquanimus. But I don't have them taking Amon Ra St. Brown. I was thinking about Terrence Marshall. Don't have them taking Terrence Marshall either. I have them taking Kadarius Tony out of Florida. I like the electricity that this guy has provided. Um, he can return punts. He He's like Smith in where I feel like he always seems one step ahead of the guy that's guarding him. Although I think Smith is a lot more smooth with his motions. Tony a little bit more like choppy. That's basically the only thing I'd be concerned about, but he would definitely gel perfect with Aaron Rodgers. I think that'd be a perfect friend. And for the Chiefs, what stone will they add to their infinity gauntlet? I'm going to say offensive lineman. I'm going to take Liam Eichenberg. I think that's how you pronounce that, from Notre Dame. I think he would fit in perfectly with the Chiefs. They could maybe use another pretty good offensive lineman. So he would fit in pretty much perfectly. So how did I do? Did I take someone good for your team? Did I take someone bad for your team? Let me know in the comments. Um, I'm definitely open to reading your comments, and um, it'll probably be a while before the next mock draft, but um, I will do another one uh, eventually, and I will be streaming for the draft in April. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time.